We do continue to track Hurricane Dorian tonight. Let's take you outside now to Jacksonville Beach. We've been watching this camera all day. A live look there. People actually have been out there in the sand watching those waves roll in. Hurricane Dorian is bringing them some choppy waters, though. As you can see, Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins here now tracking that storm for you. Those waves are, are kind of rough out there. Yeah, you know, but as a surfer, this is the time when we really want to get out there because now in Jacksonville, the winds have blown offshore. Onshore winds make the big waves. They're too choppy to surf, but when the wind turns around and blows offshore, it cleans them up. That's what we call a cleanup, so you can actually surf them a little bit better. So you'll probably see more and more people out there, although still very dangerous. All right, here we go, guys. Storm's getting bigger. Pressure has dropped. Winds have come up. It's getting a little bit stronger. You can see basically now we've got winds at about 110 miles per hour. Let's go to the big board. I want to show you the track now because this is going to move very, very closely to the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina. There it is right there. You can see that track, guys. The center line's in here. may not go exactly on that. It can go anywhere in the cone here. But that includes Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, Oak Island's right in there, Wilmington, and then all the way up through the southern outer banks, like Moorhead City, Beaufort area, and up towards Ocracoke and Hatters. Timing is tomorrow afternoon, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, it's clearing the outer banks. So really tomorrow and Friday are going to be the days that they're going to have to deal with it. And then it moves on up to the north and the east. Most of it, though, should stay just east of New England, although they could get a little bit of wind out there on the Cape. Tropical storm force winds extend outward 195 miles. Most of it's to the north of the center, but that means winds are going to be coming into Charleston soon. Hurricane force winds go out 70 miles, again, mostly to the north. But that's all going to push on shore and get close. The friction of the land will knock that down so they won't go very far inland but the coastal areas are going to get it. And as I showed you at the top of the show, I mean, the forecast models are in really good agreement. It looks like it's a pretty solid bet on that track. So winds for us, as I mentioned, are now offshore. We haven't had much at all over here, but you can see even down uh, towards Cocoa Beach right now, 25 mile per hour winds still on the breezy side. 33 mile per hour gusts in Jacksonville out of the north and the west. That's why those waves were cleaning up there. But then you go up the coast and here it comes. Savannah and Charleston, those are the two spots to watch the next 12 hours, especially Charleston and eventually Myrtle Beach, and then up into Wilmington as those winds will continue to increase. Storm surge warnings all the way up into the Chesapeake Bay as a result of this. Four to six foot surge for most areas, including the Outer Banks, four to seven foot for Wilmington. It, it, south of Wilmington, I think Myrtle Beach, Myrtle Beach is very flat. It's kind of like our coast off of here in the Gulf of Mexico. So they're going to end up with a decent storm surge, five to eight foot, a little bit less the further south you go. As far as rainfall goes, obviously, we're going to be staying dry, and I'll show you that coming up. The heaviest is going to be right here along the immediate coast. That's just because the center will get closer, and it'll be putting more steady rainfall right in that region. And you can see the excessive rainfall right there showing that South Carolina, North Carolina zone. So closer to home, it's been a really nice day out there. A little bit of a breeze. That's the shot from our Armature Works cam. Great time out there. Winds out of the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour. 88 degrees, feels like it's 96, pretty much what we had yesterday. And there's the radar. I mean, yes, a couple of quick moving showers. I don't even think they hold together to get to Brooksville Lacoochee. So yeah, just an isolated shower coming through. That is it. Drier air, look at this orange. That's drier. Not where we are. The dew points are in the 70s. But if you go up a little bit, you see all this dry air come in. That's going to cut our rain chances through the weekend. You can also, on the water vapor, see the trough. That's what's helping to pick this up and take it out, at least that's what the folks in the Carolinas are hoping, just push it offshore. For us, look at this. This is tonight into tomorrow morning, afternoon. Clouds and showers are on the map. There's just nothing to show you here. So it's a very quiet forecast for us. Tomorrow's planter, about 92 degrees. Rain chance, big old goose egg. And in fact, we're going to take that through the upcoming weekend. Very low rain chances, rather warm. But remember, the wind's off the water, and the water's in the upper 80s, so not terribly warm. It's just muggy because it's off the water. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, ah, isolated shower. Good looking time for here, uh, us, for, for us here, excuse me, but also a time to remember our friends and neighbors on the East Coast and especially in the Bahamas. It's, we're talking weeks and weeks and months and months just to get things over there. The recovery will take years in the Bahamas. Yeah, and so many people have asked about what they can do to help, and we've got some really great stuff for you right now. If you download our free 10 News app, We'll send you alerts as we continue to track Hurricane Dorian, but also you can look up ways that you can help people in the Bahamas. Just search for WTSP in your app store.